Welcome to this, the next edition of our daily devotions here at Church of the Palms. We are glad that you have found your way here and we hope that these words and reflections will be helpful for you as we make our way through this unusual time. We hope that you'll share these uh, devotions with those that you know by maybe forwarding these emails on to others that they may also uh, find uh, the benefit of these reflections. Let's now take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds to reflect upon the Word of God and to still our hearts as we listen to this beautiful music played by our very own Jonathan Spivey. Please play with me. Gracious God, we praise you that by your spirit you have drawn us to this moment of connection, connecting with you and connecting with each other. We sense your presence and ask that we may hear the whispers of your spirit in these moments of reflection. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to read to you today this text from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14. These events take place after Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We will go with you. And they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. 
Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you've just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them, and though they were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and also the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. In my last reflection, I shared with you from the first verses of the Bible when God created the heavens and the earth and how it all began with God's spirit, God's ruach hovering over the chaos, over the deep, over the void. And, and that's how God began God's work, starting with this chaos and making something out of nothing. And the first words God speaks are, let there be light, and into the darkness that covers the deep, God brings light. And what does light bring? Light brings life and hope. One of my favorite authors, Frederick Beekner, talks about this in light of our story today, where the disciples go fishing under the darkness of night, and they can't f catch anything. And then when they return to shore, just as they are preparing, just as the sun is preparing to rise, they see through the faint light a figure on the shore starting a little fire to cook breakfast. It takes them a while to figure it out that it's the resurrected Jesus. Listen to how Reverend Beekner puts it. He writes, at the end of John, the disciples go out fishing on the Sea of Tiberias. It is night and they have no luck. The nets are empty. Then they spot somebody standing on the beach, and at first they don't see who it is in the darkness. It is Jesus. The darkness of Genesis is broken by God in great majesty, speaking the word of creation, let there be light, and that's all it took. The darkness of John is broken by the flicker of a charcoal fire on the sand. Jesus has made it. He cooked some fish on it for his old friend's breakfast. On the horizon, there are the first pale traces of the sun getting ready to rise. The original creation of light itself is almost too extraordinary to take in. This little cookout on the beach is almost too ordinary to take seriously. Yet if scripture is to be believed, enormous stakes were involved in both and still are. By sheltering a spark with a pair of cupped hands and blowing on it, the light of the world gets enough of a fire going to make breakfast. It's not apt to be your interest in cosmology or even in theology that draws you to it so much as it is the empty feeling in your stomach. You don't have to understand anything very complicated. All you're asked to take is a step or two forward through the darkness and start digging in. You know, I know we're all waiting for this thing to be over and for the sun to rise high in the sky to bring us out of our homes and into the light. But for the time being, what we might need to do is to look for those little flickers of light along the way, like Jesus blowing on the embers to start a little fire on the beach. So be on the lookout for those little sparks of love and kindness and encouragement and know that this is likely the resurrected Christ gently reminding you that he is alive and he's with you and that his light brings life and hope. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, how many times when we've been worried and anxious and wondering what the future holds, that we found along the way those glimmers of light that give us hope. Help us to expect this again. Help us to look for your light everywhere we turn our hearts and minds. Reveal your presence and give us hope. In Jesus' name, amen.